It is a strike that made SEAL Team 6, a covert special operations unit, a household name. They stormed a compound in Pakistan, killing Osama bin Laden in 2011. Admiral William McRaven oversaw the mission. He now details his 37 years in the Navy in a new book, Sea Stories, My Life in Special Operations. Admiral William McRaven, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thanks. Great to be here. So this book is about much more than the raid uh, to kill bin Laden. It's about your growing up a, as a son of a career Army Air Corps right. officer, uh, going and choosing to go into the SEALs, the training you went through, getting into all kind of scrapes <laughs> as a boy, uh, guarding uh, Saddam Hussein. But I guess my first question is, where did this physical courage come from, this lack of fear? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure it was a, a lack of fear as, it mu as much as it was this kind of sense of adventure. Uh, I grew up, as you point out, in a military family. Uh, my father was a fighter pilot uh, during World War II. And, you know, hanging around that greatest generation, these men and women, that were you know, children of World War I, children of the Depression, all the men went off and fought in, in World War II. And I would listen to their stories. And, you know, their, their stories were, uh, they were poignant, they were funny, they were inspiring. Sometimes they were a little unbelievable. But I will tell you, they were always stories of courage. And so as a young boy growing up around these courageous men and women, uh, I think that instills a certain courage in you and a certain sense of adventure. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to join the military. There's a mystique, of course, around the, the SEALs and that whole, that, the training that they go right. through. And you write about how very hard it is, how most of the men who go through it don't make it. Right. What sets apart the ones who do from those who don't? Yeah, it's, it's really very simple. Uh, SEAL training really doesn't have a lot to do with, you know, how big and how strong and how fast you are. There's only one thing you have to do in SEAL training, and that's not quit. So the one thing that defines everybody that goes through SEAL training is that they didn't ring the bell, as we say. They didn't quit. And that's really what you're trying to find in the young SEAL students, because in the course of your career, you're going to be cold, wet, miserable. You're going to kind of fail often as a result of you know, bad missions, bad training. Uh, and we need people that can persevere through all of that. So while it is important to be physically fit when you go through training, uh, you find out very quickly that your background, your social status, your color, your orientation, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you go in with this, you know, purpose in mind and this, the, the thought that you are just not going to quit no matter what happens. Let's go back to the bin Laden raid. When those 24, I think it was 24 right. men went off on those two helicopters, what worried you the most? What worried me the most was the unknown. So we didn't know whether or not the compound in Abbottabad, where we thought bin Laden was, we didn't know whether it was booby-trapped. So I was pretty confident that we could make our way from Afghanistan. It was about 162 miles uh, into Pakistan. You know, we had looked at all the intelligence. We figured we could get by the Pakistani integrated air defenses, and we could get to the compound. And I knew that once the guys got to the compound, they were going to be successful. However, what we didn't know was, was bin Laden wearing a suicide vest? Were the doors booby-trapped? Was the entire compound loaded with explosives? We had seen a lot of times in Iraq and Afghanistan, the guys had gone into compounds to get high-value individuals, and the entire compound had exploded because it was wired. This was the one thing we couldn't determine ahead of time, and that was the thing that probably worried me the most. I want to ask you about several things involving foreign policy. Sure. President Trump is today in Great Britain um, uh, meeting uh, with the prime minister and other, other things. My question is, this is an administration that's had some tense relations sure. with our European allies. How important is it, based on what you saw uh, as a military officer, for the U.S. to have those strong relations with allies? Or do, can the U.S. go it alone? No, the U.S. can't go it alone. And I think our alliances are critical. Uh, not just with the Europeans, but in all sectors of the world. Uh, but, but NATO in, in particular, of course, is, is an incredible alliance we have had uh, really since the, uh, the end of World War II that has really shaped the, uh, not only European theater, uh, but the world. We cannot live without NATO. And when you take a look at what the NATO forces did, particularly after 9-11, I'm always quick to tell people, you know, they, they invoked Article 5 of the NATO Charter, uh, which says an attack on one is an attack on all. But I will tell you, it had nothing to do, in my opinion, with the NATO Charter. Uh, it really had to do with the fact that 
We were friends. We were allies. Uh, we had been there for the Europeans after World War II, and they remembered that. And so, you know, NATO went with us to Afghanistan. Uh, the Brits, of course, came with us to Iraq. We have got to have those alliances. They are incredibly important to us. Iran, uh, the Trump administration has been raising the alarms about Iran, beefing up a U.S. military presence there. Was it the right thing to do? Has it benefited the U.S. that this administration decided to pull out of the Iran nuclear agreement? Yeah, well, I, I wasn't in favor of pulling out of the, the JCPOA, the, the Iran uh, nuclear agreement. Uh, and, and while it wasn't perfect, certainly, uh, I, I do think that it, it kept a little bit of the Iranian uh, desires in check. And, and certainly it was going to push out their ability to build a nuclear weapon for some years, and I think that was all good. But I'm not particularly concerned about Iran. Uh, one, the president doesn't want to go to war in Iran. The Iranians certainly don't want us to go to war uh, against them. We've been dealing with the Iranians for decades. The only concern I have with Iran, and I think uh, Interim Secretary Shanahan said it well the other day, is a miscalculation. If the Iranians miscalculate and think they can come after us, or if you happen to get a, a rogue Iranian uh, naval officer that decides to get too close to the fleet, or somebody that decides to take a shot into the green zone, uh, that would be a miscalculation on the part of the Iranians, and, and it would not end well for them. You serve several American presidents. We are upon the next presidential election. What are the qualities that Americans should look for? Well, uh, I had the great good fortune of working with, uh, with George W. Bush uh, in the Bush White House right after 9-11. Uh, and then, of course, I was one of President Obama's commanders. And as I've said many times, I didn't agree with either president on a lot of issues. Um, but what I found was they were both men of great integrity uh, and great character. And certainly as a military officer, uh, while you may not agree with the policy, it is much easier to follow the commander in chief when you know they are men of great character or great integrity and you, you believe that they are doing what they think is right for the country. So I would offer that whoever uh, is going to be elected in 2020 or whoever the candidates are, character matters. Integrity matters. Uh, and if you don't think so, then you have never led an organization. Because let me tell you, leadership does start at the top. And if you have a bad leader at the top, it will affect the organization. Absolutely. A leader needs to be driven by three things when he thinks about a decision. Is it moral? Is it legal? And is it ethical? Those are the three litmus tests for every decision that a good leader has to make. And if you fail to use that lit litmus test, then eventually you're, you're creating this organization that is a house of cards and it will collapse at some point in time. Good leadership requires good integrity. Last, you also worked with Joe Biden when he was vice president of the United States. Your take on him? Well, I, I like uh, Vice President Biden uh, a lot. Uh, one, he, uh, he is very uh, frank. Uh, he is very warm. He is, uh, I mean, he is a guy that will embrace you, uh, you know, personally uh, in, in a way that is, uh, that it's hard to miss. Uh, you know, he's great to be around. I will leave it up to, uh, to the American people to decide whether or not he should be the right candidate. Uh, but for whatever it's worth, uh, I like uh, Vice President Biden a lot. Admiral William McRaven, the book is Sea Stories, My Life in Special Operations. Thank you. Thank you very much.